Hey everybody, welcome, it is Caleb. In this video, we're gonna be talking about how much money I earned from launching my first real course. Not a fake course, this is a real one. What I meant by that is I have launched little products here and there in the past. However, this is the first time I ever really put in a ton of effort in doing a real successful launch. And this is a course that was opened and then closed like eight days later. So people had about eight days to register which I think actually helped drive a lot of revenue for that week. So for this course, I used a course platform, Podia, and this thing has an okay landing page. So you can see here just a quick overview of what this course looked like. And basically the whole idea was I wanted to give people the opportunity to learn Python, a programming language if you're unfamiliar, the opportunity to learn Python as quickly as possible. And here were my pricing tiers. So with the basic package, you would get three weeks of Python programming, around seven hours of content. And then for the next package, you'd get the same thing, but an additional bonus week, machine learning introduction. And then lastly, the final package, which is the, all of the stuff from the beginning ones, and then also early access to an upcoming course, Python projects, which I'm still working on. So keep your eyes open for that. Now, total revenue overall for this course launch was around $14,000. However, I can go into a little bit more detail because it's not exactly just $14,000. It's a little different. So I don't have any wonderful breakdowns or charts, unfortunately, but the course itself probably earned actually around maybe 11,000, maybe even, yeah, probably around 11,000. And then that 3,000 was actually just an increase in sales on my other stuff for sale on my course. So for example, I had an upsell option to buy a miniature work in progress data structures and algorithms course, which that actually barely drove any revenue up until this course launch. So doing these open closed courses, not only got me a lot of money from the course itself, but actually drove a lot of revenue for the other stuff I had available on my website. And in terms of how the sales were broken up across these different tiers, I was shocked to find that most people actually bought the premium package, which is a little crazy because if I looked at my total audience for all the stuff I did to launch this course, there was a significant number of people complaining about the price. Oh, this is way too high. This is crazy. I can go find a course like this on Udemy. Why would I pay? $167 and those people didn't buy anything. They didn't even buy, you know, the basic. And honestly, I think even if this course was $10, they'd be upset because it's not $5. But for the people that did buy, almost every single one bought the premium. And then towards the end, I think maybe there were some people contemplating, you know, do I really want to spend this money? Oh, but it's closing here. Let me just jump in to get either the basic or the complete package. And most of those sales came at the end. So what am I doing with this information? Well, I'm honestly considering for when I relaunch this course, shifting those tiers up so that, you know, maybe the basic one starts at 97 or 167 and then increasing the higher tiers. I'm not entirely sure what I want to do with this information, but I can say that it was me limiting the, the people that bought this course. I was the one limiting their purchases. So they bought the premium package and then they bought the upsell for my other little course. And then I didn't have anything else to sell them. So they probably would have actually bought more if I let them. So that tells me I either need to, you know, shift these prices up a little bit or offer them a more expensive, more valuable upsell that, you know, might help them uh, spend a little bit more money. <laughs> I'll help you spend more money, that's how it works. Now, whether you think this was you know, a successful course launch or not, I mean, that's totally up to you. I was inspired by a couple of people that really helped me articulate what I was trying to do with this course. So shout out to Kevin Powell, Kyle from Web Dev Simplified, and also Program with Eric. So they really helped me articulate how I want to tier these sales, how I want to open and close the course, and all these little details. They even helped me review the sales page, which you guys can go look at if you're interested. It's codebreakthrough.com forward slash Python bootcamp. Although I will be updating it 
throughout. Now, I think one thing that really helped sell this was I had some testimonials from fairly reputable people. I mean, I mean, they're not that great, but I mean, we just got a couple on here and then we have another one down here. I've never heard of these guys until they reached out to me and like begged to give me a testimonial, but I think it helps at least a little bit. And additionally, I had an FAQ, which answered a lot of the questions, including offering a refund. So, you know, if they're not happy, I offer 100% money back guarantee. Now for the next launch, I'm gonna go through here and update all of this stuff. So it might not be the same for, for the next launch. For example, one thing I did was say you could upgrade and I haven't really figured out how to implement that um, effectively. So, you know, if you bought the basic tier, being able to upgrade to the complete or premium later down the road. And then in addition to having this sales page, I did a few things on YouTube and social media. Specifically, I did a launch video, which was just talking about software development in general and how it's difficult and, you know, talking about the fact that people are overwhelmed with things to learn. I have a solution for you. Here's a course that gives you everything you need in a reasonable length of time. So that was my real push on the YouTube side. And then I did two other videos, which were not sales videos, but I did mention the course at the beginning saying, hey, there's a few more days to register. Don't miss it, link in the description. And then I just moved on with the video. So I essentially just like sponsored my own video. And then on social media, all I did was really share those videos. And I think I did like a really quick flash sale, but it wasn't any huge significant percent off, maybe 25%. So that was the highest percent off I offered for this. And then most of the time people used 15% off, which was with the launch. The 25% off was, you know, only a certain number of people could get it. So you had to use it very quickly. And that also added that sense of urgency. Now, the other avenue of marketing this course was through email marketing. So I set up a, uh, an email sequence that would send people an email every day up until the course closed. And that actually did very well. Like I, in terms of total revenue, it was only about a fourth of the total revenue came from my newsletter where the rest probably came from YouTube. However, my newsletter is significantly smaller and the actual conversion was significantly higher. Meaning if my newsletter was the same size as my YouTube channel, I'd be making way more money. So the newsletter has become a higher priority for me because I see how effective it is for things like course launches. So if you wanna sign up and get notified when this course is opening and you know you want to get that email sequence, go ahead and go to the page and you can put your email in there so that way you know when the course is live. And you know that could help you if you actually want to take the course or if you're just looking to create sales funnels of your own for your own courses, then I recommend you can use mine as an example. Just make sure you remember to change from Caleb, update that to your name so that it doesn't just look like an exact copy. So based off of my newsletter, I calculated, I made about 50 cents per newsletter subscriber. I made uh, $3,500 from the newsletter and I had about 7,000 people on the newsletter at that time. So what that tells me is a newsletter subscriber right now is worth about 50 cents. And that's actually pretty high. If I could set up a system where, you know, I can pay for advertising, get new newsletter subscribers for less than 50 cents, I can basically make an infinite money loop where I make money to pay for ads and I can use that money I earn to pay for more ads. And I'd like to test that out for the next launch. So that's one thing that I'm gonna do. Next launch is work, work a little bit with advertising. And additionally, next launch, I'm going to hopefully have a few more courses available that people can buy as an upsell. And I'm going to try to back off and just watch it instead of be very, uh, basically the whole week I was very OCD checking my email. It was not like a fun launch. Like I was actually very miserable that, that whole time. Um, but you know, it was my first time doing something like this. So I was just watching, making sure everything worked the way I expected. But I'd like to get this automated enough that you know I can initiate the email sequence and I can schedule the YouTube videos and then go on vacation and not look at it, just check my email like for an hour a day just to respond to any questions or issues. And then just stay off of the internet because it made me anxious like the entire week. I don't know why, but I was just so involved in this course and I wanted it to be successful. So 
I was always checking my email to see if people bought it, always checking people comments on YouTube to see if they were excited about it or weren't excited about it. But I think I got enough sales that I'm confident to say that I could relaunch this course and hopefully get the same number of sales, but this time make it way more automated. Like for example, another thing I did during this course launch was live streaming. And I did that as like a countdown basically to drive sales. And I think that actually worked to get some more sales from YouTube, especially towards the end. However, maybe I could just get the same amount of money without doing those live streams and you know stressing myself out having to sell so much. I'd really like to just press a button, initiate sales sequence, and then be done. So let me know what you think. Was this video helpful, me sharing all of my numbers? And also, if you're wondering what I am doing with the income, I'm actually redoing this office. So yeah, we're going to have some new equipment, new camera equipment, new audio equipment, new background. I just set this up, so it's, it's gonna help me make my studio a lot better. My thought was, you know, I earned all this money from the business. I'm going to reinvest that in equipment and then also someone to help me manage my emails and just do some like orchestrational stuff so I can focus on making content. So that is how I'm spending the income and hopefully I can launch this course every six months just as a little uh, bonus 15 grand and then maybe launch a different course every six months on the opposite quarter and that'll be another 15 grand and that could be like my full-time income which is crazy. So yeah, thank you for watching. Please be sure to subscribe and let me know if you enjoy these videos showing the numbers or if you just rather me stick to the coding videos. Thank you and I'll see you in the next one.